弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。啊 ，respectful 啊。Brothers and sisters of the New South Wales and everywhere else, um, thank you for, uh, coming to the, uh, chapter three. I mean, uh, next session of Leo Fan. So today we um just discussed from last week about chapter three reform, uh, sorry, uh, cultivate goodness, uh, from last week. So this week we'll continue on this chapter. Um, last week we talk about. How people, you know, uh, uh, Master Liao Fan has given us a lot of examples um, from the past uh, in his era, in his contemporaries, which is the Ming Dynasty, where um, there are about ten cases of uh, people from all walks of life, from a normal uh, civilian to a or government official, militaries.、Um, they all have commit good deeds, and how they commit good deeds, and what are the I mean, what are the、uh, rewards or effects of them committing good deeds? And we have picked a few、uh, notable examples where they really stand out from the others,、uh, like Mr. Yang, whose、uh, whom great grandfather, great grandfather. That's the first example, by the way,、uh, has saved a lot of lives during the flood in China, and this、um, these two men, great men, have helped. These、uh, people who almost drowned and saved a lot of life, while the rest of the people, most people, are looting around the, the the river current where all the goods were flowing because of the river overflow and flooded the house. So, these、um, good deeds are not going unrewarded. It was rewarded by、um, you know cause and effect. So, when Mr. Yang's father was born. He immediately got into the imperial examination, and he got improved、um, even better when he was born. So it gets better and better as it goes behind. It's just like planting trees, and it gets more、um, fruitful as you grow、uh, when the root is good. So another case is a very old lady、uh, who always、um, make、uh, Miss Miss Lin. So she she married to the Lin.、Uh, so this Miss、uh, Madam Lin, he's a、uh, he's an old lady and very kind and always give、um, foods to people to the poor. And one there is a how to say, a debtai, which is like a someone who practice cultivates、uh, good deeds a lot and become one of those、um, gods in a Chinese uh, uh, how to say in a Chinese culture. Psycho, Xianren. So、um, we call adeptai, and this adeptai is、um, adeptus is、um, appears as a normal、uh, Taoist monk in front of and and asking for alms in front of this、uh, Miss Madam Lin. Madam Lin has、uh, no how to say he didn't ask only for one, he asked for six or seven,、uh, six or seven、um, uh, package of right、uh, of food. So it's like more than he. He, he would ask for. Normally, people will only ask for one, no more than two. He asked for six or seven. For how long? For three years. And <clears throat> this、uh, Madam Lin do not have any、uh, resemblance of grudge or you know doubt or any so, any sort of uh, 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 how to say anger or something like. Why do you take so much from us? Something like that. He she gives it generously. So. Because three years and without stopping, every day uh, this uh, adepta adeptus turn、um, turn Taoist monk、uh, has been testing this Madam Lin, and she do not change her commitment to these good deeds for three years. So they know that she's real, not only for show, for real. So because at the end of three years, the testing period, end of the exam. He talked to this Madam Lin. You have given me three years work. I mean, three years of、uh, you know food without any、uh, sort of、uh, anger or anything. You you give it willingly. So how do I repay you? So behind your、uh, property there is a land. Once you pass away, because she's already、uh, high age,、uh, your own 
next generation will um, enjoy high positions and rankings, become a duke, marquis, lords, something like that back in China, ancient China. And the amount of your descendants who will be bestowed these titles, position, wealth, and ranking will be as many as a one shen, I don't know how much, about one bag, maybe a, a kg or something, a good a good few pounds, something like that, yeah, at least a bag, 500 grams of sesame seeds. You can imagine how small sesame seed is, put it in a big bag. So that means her descendants will have, a, a lot of her descendants will get like really, really rich and, 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 and wealthy and pers- uh, high positions. That's the effect of a good deeds. And so their children follow these instructions and uh, bury the lady when she passed away naturally. And when she just passed away, her next generation, immediate generation, nine people has attained. These are all re- recorded. Nine people has attained imperial examinations, uh, one of the highest rank. That means they, they immediately got upgraded to lords and marquis and all that. And following their next generation, everyone... Uh, how to say, everyone who ha- was under her, her line will, will all get the benefit as well. So in this happens in Hokkien, which is uh, Fujian in southern China. Uh, there is a saying that there is not one Lin who does not get into uh, the uh, passing of the imperial examination. All of them gets it. All of them gets the position, the wealth and the, and the good good kamas. So these are the examples. I just bring out two very common examples um, that most good books, uh, books that ask you to do good deeds, uh, encourage you to do good deeds, usually brings out. They will say what happens, what this person did, what kind of condition that this person did these good deeds, and what are the effects after this person committed to do these good deeds. And so this is our cause and effect. So Liao Fan, uh, Mr. Liao Fan has talked ten about ten examples, and when he finished that, he moved on to actual theory behind it. Like he classified them. Last week we talked about the first of the eight pairs of um, cultivating goodness. First pair is very straightforward, um, real or fake. So is it real or fake? So I'll, I'll, I'll revise here just to give everyone a preview. There are ten. Uh, there are ten. Uh, how to say? There are ten examples that he listed before, and I only picked two out of ten. Um, all of them doing a different things, but all are good deeds. And if I, I'm just quoting him. If I summarize it, then they are number one, uh, good. I mean, they are real. The goodness that they commit, they are, they are real and fake. They are uh, crook or straight. They are hidden or obvious. They are right or wrong. They are um, offline, off uh, side, off track or on track. They are half or full. They are big or small. They are hard and easy. So all this needs to be clarified and get in depth so that we know are we actually doing the good deeds that we say we claim to be. First of all, if we do good deeds, we're not talking about why we do good deeds. Are we actually doing good deeds? What are the standards of good deeds? Then even though we claim that we are practicing, we are cultivating, we are learning Buddhism, we are learning to be a good person, decent person, but we do not know in reality we are actually committing unwholesome commerce, which means leads to the undesirable results that we trying to get rid of and whatever we're asking for will never be appear in our life. So these are a waste of time if we don't do a good examination of what we're doing. So what is real and fake? Last week we talked about that actually. I'm not going to go too long. Um, Venerable Zhong Feng which is the venerable, because we are in Amitabha Pure Land uh, Association, we've been doing the tri yearning ceremony. Uh, venerable Zen Masters, Zhongfeng, or Venerable Zhongfeng, is the one who, um, 
let's say, compile uh, this ceremony for us. So it's quite close, our relationship with him. So we like to ask, uh, in Buddhism, there are saying that all good and bad deeds will have consequences, will have karma, good and bad karma. They are like the shadows that follows your body, your shape. So based on this claim statement in Buddhism, uh, when there are a person, there are a person who do good deeds. However, when I look at this society, this is what the people who ask the venerable. There are people who do good deeds. However, their children's their descendants are not getting anywhere in the uh, they are the pursuits. I mean, they're not getting anywhere. They're not elevating any position. Their life is not getting better. Some people do bad deeds, but their family still remained in position, in power, in influence, in wealth. So I say, what Buddha say does not make sense. So when Rupa Zhongfeng says, my friend, your um, affliction has not been severed, has not been washed. That means your the lens where you view things are not clear. It's clouded. Uh, clouded by what? He said he only say four words in Chinese, but to explain this in English, it's a uh, it's something else. Fan qing wei di. So to to say in most literal way, he say that the ordinary beings they have a lot of um, afflictions, and these afflictions can be uh, summarized in Chinese word qing. We call it in English, call it the five desires, the six senses, wu yu liu qing, or we call it the um, selfishness. They have not been washed, so. The lens that you view things is not correct. It's clouded. Zheng yan wei kai. You have not seen things as they clearly are. Uh, we see things with clouded with bias, perspective, and judgment, with emotions. So we recognize good as bad because they appear as bad. We think it's bad. We point out something that are clearly bad as good. So we twisted them without intentionally or unintentionally. They are mostly happening in among the ordinary beings. Uh, and they're not, not aware that they, it is ourselves that um, swap around the reality, that twisted the reality. So what is supposed to be right becomes wrong. We point it out as wrong. What is actually wrong, we point it out as right. And uh, not only that, we even hold grudges against the gods, against the world against the rest of the world against the heaven or whatever we, we, we hold grudge against everyone for whatever happened to us so this kind of thing will worsen your condition to be honest so everyone asks so if you say so venerable uh, how are these things that we observe in the society uh, swap around like if you say that we do not see things clearly how come this happens to the good people and how come that happened to the bad people? So Venerable Zhong Feng did not answer straight away. Last week I say that this is a very wise way. Even Socrates or Aristotle, I think. Socrates or Plato, the Greek philosopher, they do the same thing. They, I don't know the term for it. It's like people ask you a question, you don't answer it straight away. You ask them a question back so that they reflect on their own. This same goes for Buddha. And so, so that's the wise people here. So he asked him them back. So tell me, what do you think is good and bad? He don't ask. He don't answer. So these people say, if someone beats you, uh, hurts you, uh, scold you, is bad. If someone respect you, give you a very uh, uh, preferential treatments, is good. Venerable Zhong Feng say not necessary. And then they keep going. If someone uh, greed, uh, take uh, being being greedy. Uh, I say hoarding the wealth on their own or taking without permission is bad. Someone who preserves their um, integrity, uh, becoming a very uh, uncorrupted official is good. I mean, they follow the rules, follow the book. To be honest, what they're trying to say is they appear to be clean, uncorrupted, because they follow the books by the letter. It's good. Venerable Zhong Feng say, not necessary. Everyone keeps saying that, like something that we call common sense in the society. Venerable Zhong Fun said, not necessary. He keeps repeating that word. So everyone say, okay, sir, since you say that, please 
tell us why. Venerable Zhongfeng finally replies after this. As long as it helps people, benefits people, then we shall call it as good. If everything they do or you do is only for the benefit of yourself, no matter what that appearance is, is bad. He said it more straightforward. He said, as long as you benefit people, it's good. Benefit yourself is bad. But I ex extended it a bit. If you actually help people, uh, then even in appearance, you might be hitting, you might be scolding, they are good. They're, you're actually helping them. If you're only helping yourself or trying to raise your profile, what we call it, the PR stunts, publicities, even you might appear as very respectful, very, uh, how to say, polite, you know, as you know in business world, polite, respectful, they are bad. They are not good. So hence, when people say they're committing good deeds, it must be like rest on the standard of do they actually benefit the public or others? Then if they do, it's real. So if it benefits the public, it's real. If it only benefits oneself or one associate, then it's fake. The deeds is not good. It's not real. The good deeds is not real. Hence, the karma is not real. It's not going to be the same. So he brings out many examples to, to support what is real, what is fake goodness. Um, so real goodness, they follow the heart. Fake goodness, or not the real goodness, they follow the others so one follows the heart they do it because it's right the others they follow whatever the others is doing oh so in function i follow you function something like they just follow what everyone is doing without knowing what they're doing or even worse they follow what others doing because these pe people is getting fame and respect even though that person is following the heart and not asking for that but this second person saw that good benefits and they do it but they're not for real so also, he went into the the very nice wording, like the, the Tao Te Ching. I'm pretty sure in the West, everyone loves that. It's a um, Taoist text as well. Wu Wei Er Wei Zhe Zhen. So I don't know, I can't give it just as my uh, explanation, but I would just follow it earnestly. What they say is, if you do it without for the sake of doing, that is real. If you just do it for the sake of doing, it's fake. That's all I can say. You have, we should all reflect on this. So now he moves on to the second one, which is a new one for us. What is crook and straight goodness? Okay, so crook and straight is about, um, how to say, the, 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 the good deeds, right? We, we, we do it. Um, when we do it, if we, if we just do it to get people's recognitions, approvals and all that, I think it would be crooked based on the examples, which I will share. If it's based on, uh, how to say, I got to get this thing done because this is what people needed right now and I would do it no matter what happens. Then it's straight. So to make this easier on us, Venerable, I mean, Master Leo Fan has given us examples. Uh, so what did he give an example? He gave a very concrete one. The sage, we call it Confucius, Buddha, Mencius, the sage would rather take someone who are Kuang Juan, who are a bit off the road, like they don't follow the conventions, they are a little bit rebellious. They rather take someone like that and train them as their students. Then taking someone who is called Jing Yuan Zi Shi, who is like a they do not they do not follow the heart they just do it for the for the for the recognitions um to to go in depth of this is a, a, a very interesting thing because a lot of times we might say oh this person is very good he agrees with everyone like, yes man he says um you know he, he he never uh conflicts with people uh he's always being very nice with people uh we call it jason yuan right however if that person only has that without any core uh, values and principles to stand on, then would you rather use this person or someone who rather disagree and makes you angry than lying to you and trying to make you feel better? Like, 
I don't think so. Like, obviously, they don't do it intentionally, but they rather disagree with you. They rather make you. Uh, they rather fear the anger, your anger or the anger of his boss, and not telling the truth. So this, I think, this is what we mean by by these words. 圣人则宁取狂捐，至于谨愿之事，虽亦相皆好，而必以为德之贼。This is even worse. He explained even in depth. He said the sage rather take someone who are not following the conventional uh, social norms, uh, but still straight at heart, obviously, than someone who appears to be polite and nice, um, how and got all the good praise from the village or from his associates, her associates, but this person is the thief of virtues. Thief of virtues means that. They are not following it from the heart. They're doing for the for the for the surface. So they may be a goody two shoes. We call it goody two shoes, but they are not really good in a in a stricter sense. Because when time comes and tested them, for example, some problems happen, issues arise, or maybe in the organization something's wrong, and this person does not have the backbone to stand up and say something's wrong. He might be. Easily sway to the to the conventions and say I I should not conflict with my boss and I should just say yes. However, this person we call it off the road, true. I mean, uh, a bit um, straightforward and and very hard to deal with. He might just say no, this is wrong. I don't I don't think this is right because this is what 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 happened. You should change this. You should not go on with this. And the boss might be angry, or everyone might be like, "Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this?" But after one day or two days, they might think, "Oh, yeah, we shouldn't do this." So this is what sage and the gods and the heavens and all the ghost standards are in comparison to us humans. So, 是以世人善恶分明与圣人相反 Hence, forth the standards of good and bad of ordinary human beings is different from the sage. And then he not to say the sage. If we say that everything, if if we use this standard, ah,、uh, everything becomes wrong for the ordinary people. The heavens and earth, the 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 spirits, in the 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 beings in the spirits world, when they judge based on merits, faults, good and bad, they follow the standards of the sage, not ours, not the common people's. They do not follow the su. 而不与世俗同取舍 ，they do not follow the ordinary peoples because they are not seeing things as they are. So when we plan to have food by accumulating good deeds, we cannot 寻耳目 We cannot just follow what we hear, what we look with our.、Uh, we do not. We cannot follow what is apparent. Sorry, what is apparent rumors and all that. We must always follow the depth of our heart, the most subtle part of our heart. So we need to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. What is my real intention? What is real underneath there? And from that depths of your heart, we wash it. We make sure it's clean, it's pure, it's real. We do not allow any sense of desires or personal calculations in there. So. To bring it more concrete sense, if the heart of helping people is pure, then we call it straight. If there are some semblance of trying to、uh, get on the people's good side, or we call it paima p, sorry, mei shi zi xin. So trying to,、um, I don't know in English, we call it、um, kiss the boots kind of thing of other people. Then we call it crude. And then he used another example. If we truly love people, we help people with whatever we do is coming from a loving heart. Then it's real. If what we do is from the heart of hatred to the towards the world, 本事技术 in Chinese, you do not like the world. You hate the world. You have all that grudge and everything in there, and whatever you do is from there. Then it's crude, even though you're doing good deeds. If we have a true Respectful heart, then it's straight. If we have the heart of trying to prank 
others or trying to uh, mess around with other people, then it's crooked. So all these are very minute, very, very, very fine. We need to have a look in depth. Um, and we don't look at others, we look at ourselves. Please do not use Leo Fan and judge others. It's really, your life will be endless of affliction. It's meant to give you happiness, not affliction. So if we use it on others, then we will have a life of affliction because this is not pure land. Everyone has mistakes. Uh, this is my own commentary. We need to use this to ourselves because only then we can reach the real standards, the real goal, and our level is up and then we can help other people according to what they, what their standard is. Number three, what is hidden and obvious? So we have talked about real, fake, crooked, straight. Now the third pair is yin-yang. Yin-yang, in this case, is called hidden, which is yin, obvious, which is yang. As long as we commit, if we commit good deeds, for the, and let other people know, like we, we purposely let other people know, then this is called obvious goodness. I, I, I do it literally. So we do it in a, in, a, in a spotlight. If we do it without letting other people know, then we call it hidden virtues. In, the, in Chinese world, in East Asian world, this is a very big thing. In, in, uh, I, w- I would like to give this context. Ying De is such a big thing in the Chinese world, especially. We all have that words in every, almost every important text, the Confucius text, the Taoist text, even the Buddhist text as well. Because Ying De is the one that completes a person, that makes a person a sage. Even some people, for example, might not be known for generations until someone review this person of a good uh, and, and their good deeds. And this person, you can imagine, their yingde is really deep. So yingde is hidden goodness, hidden virtues. They do it without needing other people to know. They just do it. And you don't even know that person is doing uh, such a big deed. Like they might save the world or something and they just go back to normal and wash the clothes and lawn the mow. You don't know this person is actually a hero. Something like that. So do not be sad if no one knows about your good deeds. Trust me, the heavens will will give you an even bigger reward than the person who get it for the name or accidentally known by others. So he continues and say, people who do good deeds without other people knowing, we call it hidden virtues, the heavens will repay them. That means the laws of cause and effect will give them a good reward. And the people who do it for the obvious reason, for the for the, um, for the spotlight, or the people whom good deeds uh, is shown to the world, they will enjoy the fame of the world. People do not know that. Uh, sorry, um, sorry, sorry. The fame is a form of fortune, which is a form of reward. People who gain the fame, fame itself is. Um, prohibited in everything like in whatever you're doing you should not aim for that fame because there are a lot of cases people enjoying the fame more than the the, the truth that they actually deserve the fame for so they enjoy the fame more than they deserve for people might praise them over the top they are not necessarily that good or they are not necessarily that uh, cal- uh, that they're capable and we always sell this person or they are always sell themselves or the people around them always selling this person without knowing. This In English, it's saying that people who get the fame, which is the fortune, more than what they actually did, deserve for, they will always have debt that debt transform into a form of calamities, personal calamities, family calamities, or natural calamities. So they will need to pay for it if they over and oversell themselves. Um, so, and these calamities comes unexpectedly. They will not expect that. Something happened. Maybe they lose all their money investment. Maybe they have someone suddenly defame them. Stuff like that. It happens a lot. 
Uh, and this is something very hidden. We can't just, because we can't go into people's profile and dig, or we can't read people's mind. But there's a lot of this case. So if, on the other hand, people who did nothing wrong, but they were being wronged wrongfully, so if they did, uh, they did not commit any uh, wrong deeds, however, they were being defamed or even accused wrongly, you can observe their next generation, their descendants usually get fortunes. Because same thing, they got damp, good uh, damp of positive karma. The people who enjoy the fame more than they deserve, damp of negative karma. So they, they all need to be repaid, balanced. So 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 this is what Leo Fan is trying to tell us, yin and yang, hidden and obvious goodness. So the difference between hidden goodness and obvious goodness is very f fine. And before I continue with the fourth pair, there were cases, there were many questions in our dear youth group. They ask about uh, what if people um, do it in the social media? They're asking for charities, stuff like that. And these people are leading an examples. Does it mean, uh, you know, does it mean these people is trying to aim for obvious goodness, even though they're trying to promote certain charities? Or is it because they're just doing for the sake of you know, sick of stunt, PR stunt, trying to get publicity up. So how do we look at this situation, real situation, using hidden goodness and obvious goodness, using these standards? From my opinion alone, uh, obviously, um, please follow Master Ching Kong's read here. But what I'm trying to say is hidden goodness, the core of that hidden goodness is you do it without needing other people to know. Whether people know or not, it's none of your business. You just do it. Then it's hidden goodness. Whether it was being exposed by other parties without your involvement or anything, it's fine. It will come out naturally anyway. My Master Chinko has donated a lot of things. He didn't promote himself doing that. A lot of people, obviously, they will say, hey, this is what the Master did. He didn't say that on his own. So that is still considered as hidden goodness. If it's obvious goodness, I think... What I'm trying to look at is, this is about the heart. Everything here, the, the eight pairs of uh, kind of goodness in opposite form, they are all about the heart. Is the intention pure or not? So, obvious goodness, obviously, I think mostly refers to person who do it for the spotlight, for the PR stunts. So, in this case of celebrities, politicians, or anyone of you know high profile nature doing this kind of promotions of kindness, obviously it's a good thing. You're promoting good deeds. But whether their heart doing it for the sake of fame or doing it for the sake of charity, you have to, you, they only, only they and the people who has the attain enlightenment or the heaven knows. We don't know. So we only hope that they will do it from the depth of their heart. If you're promoting goodness, charity, do it earnestly. Don't ask for any publicity or any uh, uh, stunts. Just do it earnestly. If they do it earnestly and this is a public nature, it's fine. It's still considered as hidden goodness. But the best thing is you do it without people knowing. Mm. Okay, so the fourth pair is right and wrong. So everyone's like, good is right. Why can be, why can good deeds become wrong? So he... Um, Leo Fan just bring out the straight example of during Confucius times. In his country, the country of Lu, this Lu country, uh, this Lu nation, um, people of Lu, there's a law, all right? They, uh, they were decree a law in Lu that whoever is the citizens of the Lu, uh, that was being back in the warring states, citizens of the Lu, um, if they help to ransom back the uh, govern uh, the governors or the um, concubines of the loose royalties or the loose government from other nations. Back then, China was not united. China was divided into hundreds uh, or maybe a good amount of small nations. Think of Europe. So if you, um, uh, how to say, ransom back uh, the governors of ministers of Lu who was being held ransomed uh, at other nations, then 
the Lu government will reward you for your deeds. Mr. Zi Gong, one of the students of Confucius, he did, he did that. However, when he went back to the government, returning the people, he did not accept the gold, the reward. He did not accept the reward. Confucius heard and he scolded him, saying, How can you do that? I said, Oh no, sorry, teacher. So, what Confucius said, well, he's quoting him. Ah, Zigong, this is your shortcomings. You have made a mistakes in this part. Why? Because every single deeds, every single minute details done by the sage, they can influence the whole society. So anything they do will affect the whole society because they are respected, revered. So everything they do will influence a lot of people. So if they do it right, they can, how to say, truly educate the people to be good. Not only, so hence, with this responsibility and influence, you cannot just do it because you think it's right. You cannot just do it because it suits you. Yes, it might be good for you, good for your name, uncorrupted and all that. But why? Why did Confucius say that? Isn't it good not asking for a reward in return of a good deeds? Isn't that called a hidden goodness? Something like that? No, no. Let's have a look. So Confucius did not hang, leave him hanging there. He, he finished up. He said, right now, nowadays, during his time, the nation of Lu, there are very few rich people in this nation. There are very few people who are rich. There are a lot of impoverished people in this nation, Zigong. If you, for the sake of your own personal liantie, for your own personal um, standard uh, of uncorruptness, for your, for your uprightness, uh, and not receiving the reward, um, how can the rest of the people do that? You are a, go a minister of this government. You have the money. You have the wealth. However, the rest of the population, 80% or 90%, I'm just giving up the I take, making up numbers, but the point is that a lot of people are not rich enough like you to do that, not to accept the, the gold. If you do that, everyone do not dare to do that because, oh, Confucius students do not do that. So how can we do that? We will get ashamed by the rest of the society. So, so like, from now on, because you did that, the rest of the people do not dare to ask for gold from the, I mean, not, the rest of the people do not have the afford, uh, do not, cannot afford to ransom back the people um, of Lu or minister of Lu who was held hostage at the other nations because they, do not dare to ask for the gold, and they don't have the real gold to ask to ransom people back. On the other hand, his other student is called Zi Lu. Okay, the first one is Zi Gong, so Mr. Gong. Okay, the other one is Mr. Lu. I just think it that way. Apologies, I can't do it well. Uh, Mr. Lu also saved people, this time from drowning. And this person who Mr. Lu saved repaying his thanks by giving him a cow. Back then, a cow means a lot. It's just like a farmer, you give him a tractor. With a tractor, they can farm the land and they can earn more money than using the hand. So in, imagine Mr. Liu save people, or you save people right now, people give you a tractor. So he accepted. it. He, he smiled and said, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. And Confucius, I mean, if we follow the ordinary standard, oh yeah, he did not ask for reward. He should be praised by his own teacher. And this person asked for reward. Uh, the other student of Confucius asked for reward. He must be scolded by teacher for being greedy. No, what Confucius? Confucius smile at him and say, oh, good, good, good. You did, you did the right thing. Because from now on, the nation of Lu has a lot of people saved from drowning. There will be a lot of people saving, be saved from drowning. So, from the ordinary eyes, the eyes that are untrained, uh, Mr. Gong, who's not taking reward for ransoming people back, and Mr. Liu, who accept the rewards in a form of cow by saving people from drowning, 
And people, Mr. Lu supposed to be good. I mean, supposed to be uh, doing the right thing. And Mr. Mr. Gong doing the right thing. Mr. Lu supposed to uh, supposed to be wrong. But Confucius turned it around. He's a sage, right? right? So sage, he praised the person who gets the reward and he uh, scolded one of his students who did not take the reward. So that, but we understand why. As long if we're doing good deeds, we do not look at the current situation. We look at its influence. So we do not say, this is a good deed, so it's good deed. No. Is this good deeds leaving a good aftermath to the society? Does it help the society? Does it better the society? Or does it make it worse? Mr. Gong's situation is, it's good now because he did not do, did not take the reward. But in long term, less people will be returned back to their home country of Lu because less people will be afford to ransom without pay, uh, without taking reward. So that's what they mean. In uh, aftermath, number one is aftermath. What's the aftermath, good or bad? And then do not talk about now, but talk about the future. Talk about long term. It's not about short term, but about long term. It's not about right now, it's about the aftermath. It's not about one person, but about tianxia, about anything under the heaven. That means it's about the world. It's not about in individuals that could do good deeds. It's about what these individuals good deeds, how they influence the rest of the world. So right now, so using this understanding that we have just gained, this theory, this per a person might commit good deeds right now. But if that good deeds, the aftermath is actually negative, then even though it appears to be good, it's actually not. So hence, wrong. Faith, wrong. Or it's, it's not. It's not good. The other hand, we use the same theory, opposites. Now, it may appear to be not good. But in long term, the influence is good, beneficial to the rest of the world. And you can help them. So it might appear as bad, but in fact, it's good. Uh, it's, it's real goodness. It might appear as a bad thing, but in long term, it's good deeds. So we just think about in opposite forms, right? And the, the, the reason is it influence the aftermath. So in aftermath, a lot of people will be truly benefited from following this example. So then we call it good. If this deeds right now, it appears as bad, but it helps a lot of people in long term, then it's good. So he did not just stop there, make it easier for us and help us. And say, So he bring another example, not just good and bad. He bring So he say that so the the say facing um, So something that appears as not so righteous turns out to be righteous in the long run. Uh, something that appears to be impolite becomes polite. Uh, it's actually helping them in the long run. Something that appears to be breaking the trust appears to be trust in the long run. Something that appears to be incompassionate appear, uh, ends up being compassionate in the long run. So what's the, what's the, how do we make sense of this? Um, from my experience, I can only talk about faith. So what appears to be not compassionate is compassionate in the long run. Example, your own parents. I, I'm talking about very small, minute one, like your own parents, right? You have parents, you have a children. And this children wants a toy, wants to be rewarded for their hard work uh, using uh, money or something. You should pay me $1 for washing the dish for you. So if we use the compassion as a standard from the ordinary people, we might actually say, yeah, sure, you should reward him. Or we should reward him one dollar for doing a, a, a washing a liquid, uh, washing the dishes. So from here, it appears to be kind. However, in long term, this person, these kids, will grow up with an idea that everything I do must be rewarded in monetary form. If not, then I will not do it. 
So what happens when this person grows up and having to deal with societies, a lot of complexities, and sometimes it asking her or him for help. She was like, what's my reward? What's in it for me? Right? So this is not compassionate to this person. If on the other hand, if these kids or these yeah, students of yours is towing tantrum, wanting to buy toys, and you hold firm on your standards and say, I do not entertain tantrums and temples. Obviously, you do not hit or anything. You just, it is illegal. What you do is you do not give any response to these kids. You just leave, leave them throwing tantrum there. You just stay still. It, in Buddhism, we call it tingong. We have practiced the meditative tranquility. You know, this is what when our meditation comes in form, right? The, the kids throwing tantrum, we just hold still. Do not let them take any advantage of that. They know, now they know. You might appear un, incompassionate now. In long run, they will no longer use emotion to judge things. They will be rational. They will be a very well-rounded person. They will know like, okay, I should not throw in tantr my tantrum just to get what I want done. No, I should be uh, patient, stuff like that, etc., etc. So educate in, in, in this way, we understand this meaning. Or example, these kids do not want to eat broccoli or peas, so you do not let them eat the dinner for one night. And not just you not eat, do not eat the dinner, you do not eat the dinner for one night. You just sit there and not eat the dinner. And the kids looking at their own parents not eating dinner. And they themselves, you know, do not have dinner. So the kids was like, oh, yeah, yeah, next time I cannot do that anymore. So this, these are the ways to educate. And the whole point is to help this person in the long run. Uh, to bring this chapter even closer to, um, to, uh, uh, to the adults, uh, Venerable Hong Yi uh, is a big name in, in, our Chinese, in the Chinese world, and I would love to introduce to the rest of the world. Master Hong Yi, who is um, very important, figures in the precept school of Mahayana Buddhism in China. Lüzhong, Nanshan Lüzhong, Hongyi Dashi. So Master Venerable Hongyi is also under Venerable Master Yin Guang, who is the patriot of our Pure Land School. So the, he, he really respects Master Yin Guang. So he, he's the only student accepted by Master Yin Guang. And Master Yin Guang swore not to have a student in his life. And he break this rule for him, exception for him. So, Venerable Hong Yi, he also has a similar method of education towards his own students, who are adults like us. Every time his students did something wrong, he did not say a word. He just sit there, not eat, not eating the whole day. And then obviously as a student, when you look at your own teacher not eating, you're like, oh, shit, someone's doing wrong. He didn't say a word, he just sit there not eating. When everyone's eating, he did not say you cannot eat. They just let them eat, but he's not eating. He's just sitting there. And then everyone do not dare to eat anymore and start to reflect on what they did on that day. So this is how you educate things. Um, this is how sage educate people. Facing to seeing, we can talk about that in the forms of not promising anything that is wrong. So we might not following the promise that we have made earlier, that appears to be harmful to themselves and the society. In long run, it's actually helping them. But I, I can't find anything concrete yet. I'll, I, I, uh, next round, I will try my best to enrich my stories. So that's the fourth uh, opposite. There's a fourth pair of goodness, types of goodness. The fifth pair is Pian Zheng. So Pian means like, um, it's not it's not bad. It's good, but it's not full. It's not perfect. It's not fully good. There is a uh, there is we call it crook as well, but translation is a bit hard in this part. We call it pian zheng. Um, in English, uh, I will, I'll probably find it from the green book later. Or, um, so to bring this point across, off the uh, off the site. And one of them is on the point, off the point, on the point. Um, this fifth pair of types of goodness refers to, uh, using one example, there is a Zaixiang, there is a minister, a prime minister in ancient China. He finishes duty. He returns back to his 
uh, countries, his own hometown. Everyone respect him. He's as heavy as the Taishan, the highest mountains in China, like Himalayan mountains. Um, and there was a normal, ordinary religious who happened to live nearby. He's drunk. He went to his residence, residence of this prime minister, ex prime minister, and scold incessantly. He just scold in front of that. Usually, in back, back then, you probably get a good beatings on that. I mean, back then they will get zhang zhe er shi san shi. But this prime minister was being kind. He's called Prime Minister Lu. His his surname is Lu. Pi, prime Minister Lu, not moving. He do not get affected by these um, religious commoners' um, uh, commotions. So he talks to his own servant and say, uh, "Do not, you know, he's drunk. Why do you have to, you know, be angry with a drunk person? He's not in control of himself." So he closed the door and say, "Okay, go, please go away. Bye bye." After a few years, this person has been committing deeds that are punishable by death. And he got executed for his crime. Prime Minister Liu has started to regret. Back then, if I give him a little bit of lessons that might appear to be very petty, he might do something as petty as scolding or drunk. But if I give him a heavy enough lessons that puts it in the memory not to not to do things out of his uh, volition. Like not to do things without thinking of the consequences, then uh, even though the punishment is small, it can help him to prevent. It can prevent him from committing deeds such as now, which is punishable by death. I'm pretty sure it's either in the category of class A lawsuit, something like that. Like, like we call it murders, stealing, raping, stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure. Uh, Prime Minister Liu, being a kind person, he is. He did not think that far, but he he said, if I punish him slightly, back then, I will help him from losing his life now because he commit even bigger crime. Because he might say, see, I can even you know scold the Prime Minister's um, residents without consequences. And he didn't scold it for whatever political reason. He just scolded without reasons. He's being drunk. So back then, Prime Minister said, "I only have the intention of trying to be kind, trying to be compassionate." However, I did not know this little compassion of mine has helped to fester, help him to fester his um, unwholesome deeds, helps encourage his unwholesome deeds further, encourage him to do bad deeds further. So it's not achieving the standard that he's trying to do. So right now, here's the consequences: this person becomes, uh, this person will, uh, is executed on a death row. So this is what we call off the point, off the off the line. I, I, I don't know how to say it in English. I'll try to find it next week. Sorry, guys. Um, but what it means is using a good heart. This person is real. Prime Minister Liu really is kind person. He in unintentionally committed something that is bad. All good intentions are paved. I mean, all roads to hell are paved with good intentions. Something like that. Not as serious as that, but it's something along that line. All roads to hell are paved with good intentions. Trying to save someone, end up getting into a conflict and messed, and doing something that you never thought you would possibly doing, like World War One or World War Two, something like that. Um, mm. And also, there are cases where people are bad in at heart, but their deeds is actually good. Well, the world is round, my friend. It's not that simple. It's not in straight lines, round. So never look at things in one dimension. So there are certain rich people's household. I'll finish up in this story. There are certain rich uh, household back in ancient China who has met upon a Large scale famine, hence that means lack of crop harvest. Hence, a lot of people go hungry. Famine. 
poor people who has nothing to eat, they do not care anymore about laws and order because you're hungry, right? They all robs food, anything they can bite on in the market. So these people, merchants, including this rich person, they're trying to, uh, how to say, they're trying to um, report to the authorities. However, the authorities do not care or does not have the capacity to care. That's, everyone is doing that. And these um, robbers, you know, farmers turn robbers, impoverished farmers turn robbers, uh, gets worse and worse, gets more brave. They, they don't even care about, you know, the potential of being caught and executed anymore. They just rob. Obviously, it hurts a lot of people. So this rich people, I'm pretty sure he wants to protect his own property. He do not care, because the government do not care, he just take matters in his own hands. Vigilant. <laughs> but he, what, he, what he did, what did he do? He captured, because he's rich, right? He has a lot of uh, guards and all that. He just ordered them to capture all these robbers, tie them up in the house, and then used whatever you know punishment they have. So because of that thing happened, because they're still a person of influence doing this, trying to protect their own property. Unintentionally, they help to pr pr uh, they help to maintain stability and peace in the society. So Zhong Shi Ding. Otherwise, this robbery will get worse and worse and worse and more frequent. So yes, they might be in pro rush, but if they're creating all the mess in society and this, this rich person, this is what happened, this rich person who has a lot of properties met as, as bigger circumstances of famine and a lot of people goes hungry, they rob the, the, the markets, like what we call Walmarts or Woolies here. And this person does not think of, oh, I want to protect the nation or something. He just say, I want to protect my property. So he calls a few, uh, we call it PMC, private military contractor or his own security guard and capture all these looters. So you can imagine in South Africa, if there are a few influential big mogul order a few militia and to capture all these uh, rebels or all these um, trouble causing people, doesn't matter what, capture them up, creating a peace in that region. It might not be out of the heart of, you know, for nations and country or, you know, the big grand noble ambition. But this is also a form of good deeds, guys. This is also helping this, objectively helping this society to maintain uh, a certain level of stability, not allowing this to fester. So when someone's doing this, even not from the kind heart, we also need to respect that, guys. We also need to respect that. So I can apply this to the charity as well. So if we think about charity, yes, this person might do PR stunt, but the fact, the objective fact is this person has done a good deed that probably helps a few person. We need to give them the credit. They do good deeds. Yes, they might not be real, hence not achieving the level of sage. But in, in the current world situation, it's better to have people doing it for the sake of publicity stunt than no one's doing anything at all. So think about that. Okay, so basically that's the fifth one, which I will repeat strongly again next time with a proper word to describe it. I'm a, my, my apologies, I didn't do much research in advance. Um, and I'll finish up with this, I think. Yeah. So he summarized is, Ms. Prime Minister Liu was trying to be kind and compassion and sub not preventing this... Uh, small-time villager from committing a big crime that punishing that is punishable by death. Um, he is right at heart. He's zheng. He's in the right path. However, his deeds are not complete. So it's wrong. Uh, it's how to say incompletion. Uh, off, uh, how to say, off the line in the, sorry, zheng pian, pian zhong zheng. Do you have any idea how to translate this? This is hard. Uh, so, uh, imperfection in perfection. Perfection in imperfection. Uh, all right, there's a gray line. Okay, there's a silver lining. I'm so sorry for this uh, bad uh, 
wrap up. So what I'm trying to say is there's a silver lining in even the good person. So this person is kind-hearted, but they unintentionally allowing bad things to to continue because they are just focusing on the kindness, but not, not thinking about the consequences. And there is a bad person who is not not bad person. There is a person who are not really kind-hearted, right? In, uh, non, not empathetic, but unintentionally, he do something that is right for the society. So this is a, this is what we call silver linings. Okay, so that's the fifth pair, the silver linings. So good person might have done something bad unintentionally, and this person who are not quite good, not empathetic. Well, don't call it bad. Okay, not quite empathetic. He ends up. You know, doing something good for the society unintentionally. So they were judging one way. Yeah. So I would like to stop here in the fifth out of the eight pair of types of goodness. I will continue and repeat again uh, these lessons on the official Liao Fun session for youth group next week. So thank you very much uh, for your attendance today. And thank you, everyone.